Hello and welcome to the show. You're watching Girls Trip with Laverne and Stephanie. I'm Stephanie Rivers. And I'm Laverne. Hey, Laverne, how are you today? What's going on, girl? So you were able to see and hear that show opening, right? Yeah. Okay, great, great, great. You know, I'm trying to um, uh, enhance the show and um, we've got a great guest today. Um, but before we get to that guest, uh, what's been going on with you in Nashville? Girl, you know, I'm trying to keep up what's going on on the news all the time. And it's a lot be happening in a day's run. But I was happy to hear that CDC is relaxing the guidelines on the mask. So we got to wait on the companies to catch up. But I'm still kind of apprehensive because everybody not vaccinated. But if you're in a group and everybody vaccinated, you don't need your mask and you don't need them when you're outside. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, so some companies, um, in fact, my gym um, that I go to, they've they stopped requiring uh, masks, although some people still wear them. And I'm one of those people with this was my thing before COVID that if you are, you know, even sweaty or you're just doing something where you're just exer overexerting yourself and you're sharing um, equipment. What is the harm in wiping it off when you finish? People just are nasty. That's what started for me to begin with. Can you just wipe <laughs> off your sweat from the machine and, and before you walk away from it? And it's just, ugh. People are I'm like, it's, it's too much. But anyway, uh, on a, a better note, we got a, a new, uh, we got a guest that, um, you know, sometimes we as women, when we are considering things or when we're doing, going about our lives, uh, we don't necessarily stop to consider a man's perspective or a man's point of view. So today we're talking to uh, someone who's going to give us his point of view. So who is this guy? Glenn Keller. He is a dynamic author. He is an award winning author as well as a motivational speaker from the Zig Ziglar Corporation. And I've known Glenn a number of years and he has done a lot of community service. He is known for his show that he did with uh, Sanjay Gupta from CNN. And he just always doing something. So I can't wait to play catch up with Glenn. He is phenomenal. <laughs> Hi, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. I, okay, his voice is not. I don't hear his voice. He got to turn up his audio. Nope. No. Nope. Now. Now I hear it. I heard a beat. I heard something. Try again, Glenn. Okay, well, when we were practicing minutes ago, we heard you. Now, all of a sudden, we can't. What? I'm not sure what? why. What did, um, yeah, what did you do since we went live? Because we heard you. His 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 audio is up on our end, so. Cut off and cut on whatever it is. Cut off something and cut it back. Yeah. Okay, so while we're waiting for Glenn to try it again, now let's see. He's let's see. Hey, are you? try. I did. He's he's on. We're not hearing anything. Uh, and 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 just when we cared about hearing the man's perspective, <laughs> we can't even hear him. <laughs> Well, we're gonna have to sign. <laughs> That's crazy. Do you know how to do sign language? <laughs> mm -mm. So while Glenn tries to work on his uh his audio, um, so you were, I know 
watching, um, we were talking about a show and I don't know if we want to mention it or, or we can, but you know, speaking of doing things for your, um, in your improvement in life, your lot in life, we were talking about, you know, there's such a thing as a girl code. Um, one of the things that, that is just universal, I think is in eight is that as friends, or as associates in the same circle, would it be okay if you dated your friends or somebody who's in your circle? Would that be okay for you to date her ex? Um, that's like me dating somebody who you used to date, Laverne, or me dating your ex-husband. That's not something that I would do because- I have mixed feelings I, about it. I do because- I wouldn't date your man on purpose or if I know him and we have run in the same circle, but I, my mixed feeling about it is sometimes people do meet in the same circle and end up together, but I would avoid it. I don't care if he is fine. I don't care if he's rich. I don't care. Is to me the value of friendships are more important than a booty call. Now I'm just saying from my perspective on that, and and I'm you said something that's true. It's universal. Women want to marry up. That is, women were. It's just we were taught to you marry a man that can provide. Now we know some women taking it to the extreme and we do know some men take it to extreme. You know, you got 70 year old men want a 20 year old woman, you know, but I think it really comes down to what do the person want for their lives. And huh, anyway, people just, but most of the time now, you know, it's a negotiation. It's a business. It's what can you provide for me? Versus what can I provide for you? The cookie store is open if you can buy the cookies. Yeah, and um, and again, we're still waiting for Glenn to get his uh, signal together. And then hopefully we could ask him, how do guys feel about this? Yeah, because this um, is a different era now. So the view, let me see if I can text him and see if he can hear us versus to see what the problem with his... Okay, so now he's back on a different. Let me see if I can bring him in. Hold on. Okay, no, that's not it. He's on a different. Okay, let me let me do something right fast. Okay. Okay, Glenn, are you hearing us? I hear you. <laughs> okay, and we we hear you now. So welcome. Although it seems like okay, so I was gonna <laughs> say your video was frozen, but now we see that you are uh, in motion in this video. So, uh, Glenn C. Keller, uh, you're <laughs> a trucker. You live in Texas still, or have you moved from Texas? I live in the country now. I live in Louisiana, in the woods, in the country. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you you're still driving for a living. Okay, so now we're getting kind of a delayed uh, audio, but um, uh, Laverne, go ahead and and reintroduce Glenn, and hopefully we can keep him here for um, for a significant amount of time. Yes, I told Glenn 28 minutes, maybe 30, but nevertheless, because he is on the road. But Glenn is an award-winning author, a motivational speaker, speaker for Zig Ziglar Corporation. He's a humanitarian. He is a dynamic personality, very articulate. And I told him many years ago, you need to have be a voiceover artist because you have just a great voice. But I've known wow. him a number of years, and he's very talented. Uh, I followed him when he was chosen for Sanjay Gupta's Fit Nation. <laughs> I think that's what it's called. And Fit I'll Nation. let you share more about it. But it was just a great journey. 
that I've been able to follow Glenn off and on for a number of years now. So Glenn, tell us more. <laughs> wow, you guys are just too, too awesome, too, too kind, but I love y'all to death and I'm glad to be here. Uh, mm -hmm. It has been quite a journey. Huh. Are, you, are, you, are we coming through okay? Yeah, I hear you now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Now, I just happened to catch the tail end of a question that was being asked that if I could have got the rest of it, I would love to put the input in on that. What was that conversation going on there? When, we're, uh, we're talking about there. women. You know, women used to, well, when I was a little girl, because there's a age difference between Stephanie generation and mine as well. So you get to hear two generational viewpoints. We okay. were taught well, to marry a man. That far apart. Well, we were, we were taught <laughs> to marry a man that could provide. Now we know that women they don't necessarily have to. Well, even then, they didn't necessarily love the guy. They just married him because mama say he's a good provider. You need to get married and have children. That's all we were taught. We wouldn't worry about no careers and all of that back then. So now it's so extreme that it's like it's becoming a business. And some people looking at it as a business. If I marry you, what do you have to put on the table? And they ask the other partners the same thing. Some people doing prenups and blah, blah, blah. So that's what we were kind of sharing and stephanie you can add more to it well um you know it just seems as if as time goes on from one generation to the next some things are constant but then there are some some codes some um semblance of civility that we would think oh that's just a no-no i don't care how old or how young you are that's a no-no it seems like some things go by the wayside in favor of money and status. And so, um, Glenn, as a man, you know, for, for women, for, for let me say women of a certain caliber, let me say that. Women of a certain caliber, we think it's a no-no for you to date um, or be uh, intimately involved with uh, your friends or your, whether y'all know each other a little bit or y'all you know see each other every day or co-workers or neighbors for me to to get into a relationship with your ex that's just not something that i would do um but do god how, how do guys feel about that if you had a friend or a co-worker or somebody that you consider to be an associate would you be okay with with him dating your sleeping with your ex or would you sleep with his ex personally i wouldn't <laughs> okay why 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 not because it's just too close to home or is you just is i think i think based on how i live how i've lived my life and how i was raised it would just be awkward they're down depending on how, what kind of friends you are. Uh, if you're open enough with each other to have the discussion uh, where, look, you know, this has taken place and, you know, that's my ex or this is your ex and um, we've gotten to know each other. And I just want to know, uh, and this, this is probably the approach I would take, just the upfront front approach. You know, would it bother you? Would it upset you? Would it put you in your feelings if, uh, if you knew I was dating your ex? So, so you would at least ask if you if you thought it could go to that level, you would at least ask and get get it cleared first. And, and then I think it would it couldn't just be just any old relationship to go down that path. It would really have to be some potential there. Uh, I mean, this would just have to be a dynamic woman that it would be worth taking that chance. Because why stir, uh, stir up a hornet's nest and you don't even see any real future in it? But if, if, if she's the person that, okay, this is somebody that can make me happy. She's got it going on. Then it's worth the risk to go to him and say, look, I'm not trying to cause no confusion. Me and your ex been talking. You know, I think she's incredible. Uh, I hope you won't have any ill feelings. 
uh, if we begin a relationship, if you do tell me now, uh, but yeah, I would go ahead and just be upfront with you. Because a lot of times I think that, you know, um, it, it, and that's a good way of going about it, Glenn. I think a lot of times in that situation, then the the question in that person's mind is, well, how long you been looking at my woman? Well, how long you been looking at my man? Are you really my friend if now you're going to be that interested in him or her? How do I know that you're really, you weren't there all the time? Y'all weren't doing this all the time. And it just creates so much, uh, I think, uh, question, a question of trust that, and, and you know, how you, how I, how you view me, how I present myself. If of all the people in the world, you can't find nobody else to do what you want to do with, except for the person that I used to be involved with. That's the question for me. Like, how broad is your horizons if you only looking at somebody that's around the corner anyway? <laughs> but that's what would make me do it. Oh, I think he's frozen again. <laughs> Wait, that's exactly why I would do it the way that I speak. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. I'm frozen. Keep going. Okay, the, re the reason that I would go to him, the reason I would approach him man to man and say, look, this is the deal. Uh, I, I think it presents an image of being open and out front. Now, if I just start seeing her and then he catches me seeing her and there was no discussion, then it looks like it's been going on the whole time. But if I go and I'm, and I'm up front, then no, it looks like a legitimate, you know, we met, we've connected, there's some chemistry. However, we're friends. And if this, and as a matter of fact, if this is going to cause an issue, you know, especially if we're co-workers or something, if this is going to cause an issue with you, then we possibly need to rethink this because relationships are hard enough without dealing with other conflict. I agree. I agree. Um, so speaking of relationships with you, I know you, you know, um, one of the things that, that women look for in men is somebody who's willing to challenge himself, someone who wants to be better. And so Laverne mentioned that you were a part of the Sanjay Gupta. Um, um, was it a some type of D tricathlon or where you were challenging yourself? And then most recently, you um, took a public speaking course to um, increase your skill set. Talk to us about that. I've, me personally, uh, maybe I'm cut from a different cloth. I've always been a very generous person. Uh, love has always been at the top of my list. Unfortunately, it's been very elusive for me. Uh, I, don't, I, I only know how to be um, one way and that somebody. I, I, would, I would try to treat somebody the way that I wanted to be treated. However, uh, based on my own personal experience, uh, and I'm going to just have to put this out here. I mean, I've actually gotten married, what, five times? And the fifth one, I married twice. And I don't know if people are marrying for love anymore. Yeah. I, I really don't. That's what I was I, saying earlier. <laughs> Because, I mean, I've, I've come in and laid it all on the table every time. And every time it ended in some demise. Uh, you know, but I, 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 read, an, I read something. Um, it was an equation. And I thought maybe I fell, I fell into that equation. And the equation was this. Too much plus too soon plus too freely equals disaster. Mm -hmm. You said too much plus too soon plus too much what? Too much plus too soon equals disaster. Plus too freely. Too soon, <laughs> too much, too soon, too freely equals disaster. Because, okay. because, because you show the person your hand before you show them your heart. And they like more what's in your hand than they do what's in your heart. That do happen. 
And by the time yeah. you mm-hmm. find that out, you've already scrolled down that aisle. You've already shared your till death do us part. But then when the when the, when the money ain't right, <laughs> this is death, and we're about to part. <laughs> So, so then that speaks to, um, like you just said, moving too fast, whether you think it's too fast or not. So five times, Glenn, I had no idea you had been remarried, you had married five times. Um, so what would you do differently with the next potential Mrs. Keller? What, how would you, how do you know? Because that's the thing with with love. You when you're in it, you think you know. Like this is the person. <laughs> you're like, I thank you, God. But at some point, when it goes sour, you're like, I thought I knew, and I realized I didn't know nothing. And but you try to move differently later, and you know, if it ever comes up again, if you don't swear I've loved forever. Um, so what is it that you would do differently? And I guess that's a question that we all could answer. And so to give myself time to think about what would I do differently if I decided I wanted to, cause I've been married one, one time and divorced once and, um, he was a good guy and, and, and we were good together. It was just issues that I just felt like didn't, weren't, weren't going to get better. I was married for 10 years. And so I've been divorced longer than I was married. And so looking back, just what would I do differently? I'm going to give myself time to answer that. And and we're going to throw it to you, Glenn, but especially somebody who's married five times, what was it? What would it be that you would do differently if you could? And then, Laverne, you get ready because we're coming to you. <laughs> yeah, but what make you think I'll do it again? But <laughs> <laughs> so you, so you don't think you would get married again? That's not okay. However, although that's not my mindset. I'm, I'm going to interject a little something that that I think coincides with what we're, what we're talking about here. And it's going to preface what I'm about to say. You know, in our communities, uh, mental health is taboo. You know, if you're talking to a therapist or a counselor, you know, people think you're crazy because you go talk to somebody. But I have a therapist and we talk every two weeks. And he shared something with me that I'll never forget. And this will be something that if it were to happen again, that it would definitely, definitely, definitely be used. And uh, as quick as I could share this, he's very illustrative, but he's awesome at what he does. He got up and drew a a little road on on the whiteboard, a little crooked road, then he drew a little bridge, and then he drew some more road. And he said, Glenn, at the beginning of this road is where two people meet, and we're gonna assume that they're Christian people and there's no sex involved. So he said, at the beginning of this road is where two people meet. And the whole first portion of this road is discernment. Him discerning her, her discerning him. What are your what is what are your views on money? What are your views on children? What are your Christian views? These are all the things that you're discussing in the first portion of this road. Anything that you think you need to know about this person or you want them to know about, that's what the first part of the road is. Discernment, discernment, discernment. And then he said that based on his analogy and based on what he was telling me, you come to a juncture in the road where you would think a grown man and a grown woman, when they reach this point in the road, that they're able to say to each other, based on everything that we've learned, based on everything that we've discerned, do we continue down this path or do we just say thank you for a nice time, but I just don't think this is for us. Um, My therapist happens to be Caucasian, white, whatever. I interjected and told him that I thought what he was saying had a a cultural twist to it. And everybody may not see it this way, but this is how I've seen it in my 60 years. Whereas they were able to do some discernment and decide that, okay, no, we wouldn't be a good married couple and walk away. We function in a community where 
if I say, Laverne, you want to go out next week and, and Laverne agrees and, and we go out and then, you know, maybe we didn't talk that week. But if I go out that, ne that next week and I see Laverne Club and somebody sitting there in front of her, uh, why are you out here? <laughs> you know, we ain't never made no commitment. All I did was took her out one time. But in my mind, one time was enough of a commitment. And I brought and we and we had dinner and I bought drinks. Oh no, what you doing out here with another man? <laughs> That's how we act. And the same thing happens vice versa. Uh, a man could bring a, a, a lady could go out with a man, and then the next week she see him in the club with somebody, it's getting ready to go down. <laughs> <laughs> So we don't we don't reach that juncture in the road where we get to make a decision on whether we go forward or not. When we first go out, there's a commitment there. No. Um, and you know what? I think a lot of that has to do with because we value maybe for I guess maybe it's it's the it's it happens for different reasons whether you are a woman or a man, but we value so much our time and our energy and our money if we are spending time money and or energy or money with somebody that's like an investment and i guess we shouldn't be we get too emotionally attached when we should be trying to still be in the interview phase just like to hire somebody for a job you right. bring in people who might be good for the position, but you don't necessarily commit to them just because they showed up. You like, you're still in the process of evaluating them. And, and, and so I, I, I agree with you. Um, and one other thing, we get intimate too fast. So there is a need to not, not, commit to intimacy with people. Don't be jumping in the bed, sleeping with people, doing all this, because now, oh, you gave your body to the person, somebody, and now you're like, what? And you have somebody else? Now you all upset when you move too fast to begin with. And that, if there was ever anything to muddy the water, that right there <laughs> muddies the water. Uh, once, you've, once you've gone there, it almost makes other stuff... Just going there makes somebody think they're in love. Just going there makes people think they've met their life partner when all they did really was sleep with them. These right. are generational views. I'm listening to you guys, but the younger generation don't look at it like that. If I like you, you like me, we go out to drinks and we want to throw down afterwards, we do it. There's no right. strings got to be attached. Yeah. And so, you know, therein lies the, the it's, it's so many generational things that that happen, you know, whether you try to stay in in, uh, you know, five years before or after, you, you know, you try to might maybe stay into a little circle. I'm only going I'm dating people two or three years earlier, you know, younger than me, two or three years ahead of me. So we are kind of think the same way about dating. Because if you start getting into five or 10 years in front of me or five or 10 years behead, uh, behind me, then it's like, then kind of those, those norms, those social norms have a tendency to change all the way around. And, and so, yes, I agree, uh, Laverne, the younger generation thinks differently about intimacy and money and but when it comes back down to it, it's like we, you know, again, we, we, you don't know what's going on with people until you take the time to get to know them. And that's why you shouldn't be so intimate with people when you first meet them. So you can get to know them like Glenn is saying. And I, you know, that's so important. And maybe it will turn out that, Okay, I spent a month or two getting to know you and how you think, but it, I've decided, just like a job, I might have to work that job a month or two or six months to realize, you know what, this really ain't what I like, and be willing well, to I move have on. Another perspective there too. There are some people. Let's not leave the other set of people out. I'm not trying to 
to figure you out. I just want us to go have some drinks and find the nearest hotel. It's just like some people, they want a job, not long range. The job is just so that I can pay my light bill. I need $220. I'm just going to work this one week and I'm through with the job. Right. So, see, we have to, we have talk. to really see that. You got to talk. I, our relationship may just be, hey, hey, we saw, I saw you at the club. I want to have coffee with you. Hey, I think we got this compatibility let's do this the higher regency right down the street let's go and get it i mean but you know I yeah had women you know, tell me i wasn't in this for no relationship i just wanted my 30 minutes of pleasure you know this this, what has been my, this has been my perspective and i didn't get it from anywhere it just was my perspective i've always felt like and maybe it goes along with what you're saying laverne that I feel like a grown man and a grown woman ought to be able to sit down and put, put all their cards on the table, all of them. Because so all, you know, the brother hold his cards back, now the sister done fell in love. And now he there stuttering, talking about, uh, 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 I really didn't want to hurt you. Uh, uh, you were such a nice woman that, uh, I ain't going to tell you that I was still married. Duh. <laughs> but see, everybody not into. I don't want your cars. I don't want to know nothing about your baggage. All I want is 30 minutes of pleasure. I don't want to hear nothing about all that. So that's what I'm saying. We are used to traditional viewpoints and what we were taught and what was passed down. And now we're in a generation that's more open. They don't have to have as much as we used to have to have to feel secure in a relationship. Who said we need a relationship? This is just a, I saw you, you saw me, we got together, thank you, bye. Don't call me, don't text me, don't even email me. Thank you, it was nice. Now, well, if it's really good, I'll call you. Well, I, I just have a problem. You know, that's okay too, but then just like Glenn is saying, when you are honest and you put your cards on the table and you, you, you know, tell people whatever it is that you end up telling them that lets them say, oh, maybe I want to stick around for the money or I want to stick around for the uh, 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 benefits that, or, or, you know, since when people know you work for the airline industry, oh, the, you know, I can get free flight benefits or whatever. When, you know, they always come up with a reason. You think they're there for one reason and they end up being there for another reason. And it's just like, can we just be honest with each other? Because well, now that's the relationship you're trying to build. Now that is in Glenn's theory works. Let's just be honest. This is who I am. This is what I have to offer. On the but front you end. Know what? Even if you don't want a relationship, even if you just want to be there for sex, then just say that. Just say that so we'll both know where we stand. Okay. So, Glenn, are you still with us? Because I think he's frozen again. So, at any rate, um, you know, it's, you know, I... Hey, Glenn, are you there? Okay, he might be uh, okay. um, going out of range because he is driving. So in closing, no, um, Glenn, do you want to add it? And it seems like Glenn would be, Laverne, maybe Glenn can be um, the, the, the man's perspective that we go to whenever we want to bring, whenever we care to listen to what a man, no, I'm just playing. Whenever we want to, <laughs> he'll make a good road. Take you know? a guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, Glenn, I know you said that you wouldn't, you know, that, but of course, that, you know, we all want to be loved. In fact, a friend of mine sent me something earlier, um, who's in, it was in essence, he was talking about the, the, the need for hugs. We all want to be loved. We all want to be cared for and, and feel validated and valued. So, um, what, what, you know, in closing, cause we know you, um, are traveling. Um, do you want to be our, um, man's perspective 
guru on our on the girls trip whenever we uh, once a month maybe we can have you on to talk about or once every every month and a half we'll come talk to glenn's perspective on what's going on with men how about that if you if you think Glenn, this is what I would like to see done. The next time we bring you on, talk about Fit Nation, because this call, this this interruption and delay, it has been awkward for, for us all. But I would love for you to come back and share that journey of preparing to be on the show and uh, be on CNN and what that was like to work with Dr. Sanjay <laughs> and, and all of the people you met. I sure will. Okay. All righty. So, uh, Glenn, thank you so much. And uh, you be safe out there and we will talk to you. We'll schedule another time when uh, when maybe you can be stable and stationary and we can have some better uh, Wi-Fi service for you. <laughs> and maybe I can get my camera right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, so. <laughs> okay. So uh, it was great because uh, he it seems like he has great um, feedback. And so that would be great for us to try to um, have Glenn on and talk about that. Because, you know, Laverne, one of the things that I, I also think is important and Glenn hit on the in, in you know, the um, that what some cultures might do in their dating habits and what's different in ours is, is that I think when women, when black women um, are going, are starting relationships, they, we, a, a lot of people don't see us as, as valuable. They don't see black women as being, um, as being important or being loved already by the fathers, by our brothers, by our cousins, by our uncles. We don't. So when we present ourselves in a relationship, we end up being the, the only people that man meets. And I'm talking about a um, traditional heterosexual relationship. OK, that's what I'm talking about. We don't we present ourselves with a whole bunch of women behind us or a whole bunch of aunties and cousins and sisters, where are the men who will step up to the man who's supposed to be interested in you and say, if you hurt her, you gonna have to face me. And that lets a man who the prospect know, okay, I'm going to be dealing with some issues if I hurt this woman. And he, and, and that lets him know he's got to, He's got to act right. He's got to know that somebody else values this woman as opposed to it's a bunch of women coming on behalf of this other woman and there's no men and there's no fear of hurting her. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, but if you look at the, the family dynamics and single parent uh, statistics, you understand why you don't see as many men in families like certain cultures where men are the are dominating the women, whereas the African American culture, American culture, is mostly women. Right, and I I I I get it, but we need to change it because it doesn't have to be my father. It could be my grandfather. It could be my uncle. It could be my cousin. It could be my brother. Some men have to show up in our lives and we have to require certain things of the men who come to our lives and not be so in a position where oh i need the man i need you to cover me because i already got cover you see what i'm saying i already got men in my life who value me so when you if you want to come into my sphere you need to come with something and be and know that you're stepping into or you want to 
be in a circle where I am already valued and that you're not the only person who's going to value me. And that's important. So it doesn't necessarily have to be my father. It just needs to be somebody who shows value for me. And that's the thing that I see um, is, is a problem that that's why things happen to us. Not, not all the time. And I'm not trying to blame anybody. I'm saying if somebody shows value, if, if somebody comes into a situation and there's value in the situation they're coming into, they're going to act differently. Mm-hmm. Then if they think they're all, they're bringing all the money, if they're bringing all the validity, if they're bringing all the value, then they come with some swagger that they wouldn't come if there's already a man that's saying, look, bruh, you're not going to do certain things to this woman because we love her and we she's already protected. And so that's something I would love to talk with Glenn about as well. Mm-hmm. Or any any other men, if there are men out there who are listening on um, this TriCast, because we are TriCasting on YouTube and Facebook Live and um, Insta, not Instagram, LinkedIn, LinkedIn Live. If we, you know, tell us how you feel about that. Because I I don't think men come in with the perspective of this could be my sister. This is somebody's sister. This could be my mom or my auntie or my cousin. She has a, a, you know, she's somebody's mom, auntie, cousin, and I need to treat her like I would want somebody to treat my relative. If they did that, a lot of the abuse, physical, um, a lot of the cheating, a lot of the mistrust things that go on in relationships, I don't think would happen. Yep. So having said that, we are working on a special that we're going to start in about 15 or 20 minutes um, as a matter of fact, we have done so much to bring, to bring, I think our, I know our production company, which is Women of Ruth Productions, you, Laverne, and I have done so much in trying to bring light and value to what women are doing. So we understand that one of our former castmates, um, Beverly, Tate is her name now, but when we were working with her, she was Beverly Brodus Green. She Snoop Dogg's mother, and she was, um, she was, we had her under contract, actually, to be one of our cast members in um, a show that we were producing. So we're going to talk more about that in a couple of minutes. We're going to do a special on Beverly Tate, and so we'll be coming back in about 20 minutes. Is that good for you? Yes. Sound good? Laverne. Yes. Is that is that good for you? Yes. Uh-huh. All righty then. So we're going to close this out and we will be back in about 20 minutes to talk about our special report on Beverly Tate. Very good. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.